Hi everyone, it's Dee Rondinella, Coordinator of Technology Training for the Star County District Library. I'm here today to present our Saturday Sewing Project, How to Make a Sundress Out of a Pillowcase. If you look right here, I do have a sample ready for you to see. And let's try to figure out where is that pillowcase inside of here. Well, if you look closely, you're going to see here's the cuff that you would use as your pillowcase when you were making it. Then you have your ribbon here that is your decorative piece. And then if you look here to the top, that's going to be the body of the pillowcase. I'm going to continue on and showing you some additional pieces. We have up here on top now from our pillowcase our actual ties for the sundress. And we've also enclosed in a bias tape the arms. So we're going to get started and we're going to learn how to do this. Alright, I have with me a pillowcase that I have previously made. You can use a store-bought pillowcase as well, but I tend to like to make mine from ones that I have made so that I can choose my patterns. One of the things I do want to recommend to you is when you are going to use a, either a store-bought pillowcase or a homemade pillowcase, that you make sure that the pattern is facing in the right direction that cuff of the pillowcase is going to become the hem. So when you are choosing your pattern, then you wanna make sure that the pattern is going towards that cuff. All right, I have already cut the top of my pillowcase off. Now let me show you that, shall we? So you can see what's happening here. I have here a standard pillowcase, standard size. I have removed the top. I just simply used a rotary cutter and I just cut off the top seam. From there, the next thing you do, you need to measure the child to make sure it's the appropriate size. If you need to shrink it down, you would just simply put a seam on the side that already has a seam, or you can remove it from the top. It's up to you. I'm going to show you a comparative. This one I cut down for a three-year-old child, right? So a three-year-old would wear that. This one that I have in front of me now this one a six-year-old could wear. Well, like I said, you can just trim them down by putting an extra seam here and or removing some of the excess off of the top of the pillowcase. All right. Now that we have our pillowcase ready to go and it's the size I want it to be, I'm gonna do some um, different measurings for it. I am going to place a line and if you look very close, you're going to see that I have a pencil line, actually two of them. I have one here a quarter inch away from the raw edge, and then I have one that is one and a quarter inch away from the raw edge. The reason I do that is so I can create the casing much easier. And your casing is where the bias tape will feed through so you can tie the um, arms up. So let's get started. I have my pencil marks in place, and part two now, I would iron it down. By ironing it down before you do any additional cutting, you know you have it straight. After I iron it down, I'm going to draw some additional lines to show you how to put in the holes for the arm that you will be cutting. So give me a moment and I'm going to start my ironing. It's not a difficult process. Sometimes it's easier to do it from um, the inside out. However, I'm just going to gently do mine right here. Notice I'm following my pencil line and I'm doing my first press. When I complete it all the way around, I will then come back again, and I will go down to my second line, and I will once again do the press so that it is right on that second line. I'm gonna finish this up, and I will be right back, and I'm gonna show you how to cut out those armholes. I finished my pressing of my seam as well as my casing, so I have my fold lines that are very obvious. Now we're going to draw in our arm holes so that we can properly cut them. One of the things when you are making a pillowcase sundress is you want to make sure that this side seam here from the manufacturer, one that you put in, is actually in the back of the dress. So when I go to lift it and fold it, I'm going to make sure that that seam is in the center. From there, to make things even, I'm going to give it a second fold, then I know those arm holes that we're going to cut out are exactly the same height and width. So I've got my dress ready, 
it's laid out nice and flat. My seam is in the proper place. Now let's go ahead and draw those lines. Standard is six inches by two inches, but you wanna measure the child to make sure that that is the good size for them and that it rests nicely on their arms. I have a standard ruler. Here is my two inch that I'm going to be following and here is my six inch. I'm going to need mine to be slightly larger, so I'm going to start at the casing itself. I will place it on my two inch and I'm going to draw it the entire length down. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, draw my first line, and notice I'm giving it a good um, pressing so that I can get that to be seen because it's going to be covered up with bias tape. Now, I did not finish the end. I actually left the end open. The reason is because you want to make that a circle. I just simply take my top of my pin cushion because it's a nice circle and I rest it. I lay it right on there. Let me turn this so you can see what I'm doing. So when I have my bottom pencil mark, I rest one side of my pin cushion. For my next pencil mark on the far side, I put my pin cushion so that it is equal and even. Then I will draw once again a rounded pencil mark. Let me show you what that looks like. So you have your bottom, you have your side, and we have our rounded area. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this very quickly because you're gonna do both at the same time. It will go faster. You can use a rotary cutter if you choose to. I'm just gonna cut this out so that you can see it happening. There I am. Here's both of my pieces are removed and here is my sundress and when I open it up you're going to see I have what is looking closer to a sundress. Now next piece I have to do is put on my bias tape. My bias tape is homemade but you can indeed purchase it but first thing I'm going to do is fold it down and I'm going to give it a little twist and a press and I'm going to leave my first seam allowance down and I'm going to then roll it over top of the actual raw edge. I will take a pin and I'm going to pin it and then I will continue on and I will be right back. All right, I have both my arms that the bias tape is gently pinned around. You can see I've done the same thing on this side. Now, when I get that done, now you notice I pulled and I tugged and I got it to follow the circle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come over here to my machine and I'm going to sew that bias tape on. You wanna stay close to the edge. I have a little mark on my foot and therefore I can follow that little mark and I can sew all the way around. I'll be right back in a moment and I'm gonna have this finish sewn on so you can see what to do next. All right, I've sewed both of my bias tape on each side of the arms. I put the seam very, very close to the edge so that it catches all of the fabric. And the next thing I need to do is I need to put in my casing. And a casing is a space in your fabric that you create by, to allow you to put in either elastic or in this case, bias tape. So I have folded down, remember, in the very beginning with my pencil mark, I have folded down and I have pressed my casing and it's ready to get its final seam. So what's gonna happen is when I'm done uh, sewing this side, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna have a seam in it. This is the wrong side of the fabric, by the way. And when you turn it over, you're going to just see the, barely see the seam on that side. Then I used, I uh, just simply used a pin. You can buy fancy gadgets, but I used a pin and I fed my bias tape through. My bias tape is what we 44 inches long, just to help you out there. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna sew up this other side of the casing and I'm gonna feed my bias tape through. And then from there, I'm going to tie it up and I'm going to show you how to do the finishing work. So I'm going to take a moment and sew this last seam here. Okay, I've 
finished my second seam here that I wanted to do. I remembered to fold under where the bias tape with the arm is. I left my opening for my casing and I'm presently pulling my bias tape through. So I'm pulling it and there it is at the end because there's my little pin and I'm going to give it a tug and I'm going to bring it to the halfway mark. And that's what it's going to look like. Now there's a couple of little extra steps that you're going to be doing. And I do this to secure the, the actual string inside of the dress. I'll put a seam right here in the center and then I'm going to fold the end of the bias tape and I'm going to secure it with a seam as well. It's so it doesn't eventually come unraveled. When I'm done with that, the dress is ready to go. What you're going to do is you're gonna shake your dress out. Nice little dress, isn't it? There's my back. Here is my front. There's my pillowcase cuff, my ribbon, the body. Here's the arms I cut out. I put my bias tape on. I put in my casing seam. I fed my bias tape through. I'm ready to go and I'm going to tie it. Just a nice little neat tie. Then you may tighten it up as much as you want for the child. It's entirely up to you. And I'll tie my second side. And if the straps are a little too long, go ahead and trim them down. And you have yourself a little dress. There you are. The nice thing about it, it is, just doesn't have to be a summer dress. I have made them in holiday colors as well. And for little ones, what I do, especially like at Halloween or at Christmas or even at Easter, I place a turtleneck that matches the actual fabric and little leggings and they have what is called a popover instead of a simple dress. So here you are. If you have any questions, please email me at trainer at starklibrary.org. And I hope you enjoy making your pillowcase sundresses.